licking me. Oh! oh. Sniff it. No, it's just. Oh! That reeks. Yeah, have to. No, I don't want. No, I don't want to. No, it's <laughs> me. It s- actually smells like asshole. I can smell him from here. No, like s- when he licks you, it's different. It's a yeah. Different no, smell. it's the. No, I want to smell that. It's not different. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> I have all of that in film too. <laughs> nah, <No, it's sweet. laughs> I know it's bad, I don't want to smell it. <sighs> hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the five easiest plants that you can grow in your collection. The five easiest carnivorous plants that you could ever own. The first ones as well. And here's Karen with us today. G'day. And, and um, Tom. Hey! Tom the rat bag. <laughs> so I just have some plants here for you guys. We have uh, six different plants here. It's uh, five different species and I'm going to talk about each one and why they're so easy to look after. And I'll give you a little bit of information about their care and you know the reason why they're so easy. So first off we have our sun juice. We have four sun juice here. Uh, this is Dross. This is Drosera, I don't know, Alicia of some sort, Drosera bonata, and we have Drosera capensis, and also Drosera capensis, but the Alba version, and that means that it stays completely white, there's no red in it. So, the reason why we have these Drosera in this video here, as some of the easiest plants to grow, is that these specific species are seriously one of the easiest ones to grow. Drosera capensis is kind of known as a weed in you know the hobby it's so easy to grow when when they start flowering and they set seeds their seeds go everywhere and you just get like a million of these little plants popping up everywhere in places you don't even want them so they can they can grow like in anything they don't even need much light to grow if you give them a lot of light like these ones are busy getting like so much light and heat they'll still grow and if they're getting not enough they'll still grow so they never really die and the same with the alba form they're just so easy to grow you just give them like any water really, <laughs> even tap water, they'll still grow. So that's why Drosera capensis is one of the easiest carnivorous plants that you can ever grow. Wow, <laughs> <Boy>. <laughs> that's crazy. Like I mentioned, Drosera capensis, these um, ones over here, they also flower very easily. And when they do flower, flowering doesn't take anything out of them. Uh, so some plants like the Venus flytrap, which is part of this list, we'll, and we'll talk about it a bit later, when a Venus flytrap flowers, it's actually recommended that you cut the flower off and um, that's just to preserve energy for the plant so it doesn't die off. But with the Drosera capensis, like if it flowers, it sometimes flowers four or five times in a season, it does nothing to the plant. So you can just let them flower if you want, if you want to have a thousand Drosera capensis all over your collection. So second in this list would be our Drosera bonata over here. So, yeah, there's little bugs sitting on there. Drosera bonata, in the name, it means by, it means to, nata. I don't know what that means, but bonata means double, or, yeah, double leaf, basically. And it's native to here in Australia, and it's also one of the super easy plants to grow. Just, just like the Drosera capensis, you can let it sit in as much sun as you want, or less sun, and even the water, they don't mind that much. And they'll just keep on growing non-stop. They, they're really just un, unkillable. And when they you know, make their flowers and they set their seeds, they're just like a capensis and that their seeds go everywhere and you get millions of them all over your pots. The only difference between a bonata and a capensis is that a capensis will grow around the year non-stop and even in winter, whereas Drosera bonata goes to sleep in winter, they go dormant. So that is something that you guys need to keep in mind if you ever get yourself a Drosera bonata. But if you keep it outside, you grow it outside, it goes to dormant by itself and that's it. It's it's really no more care than a capensis. They're super easy to care for, super easy to grow. And honestly, that's why they make number two in our list of the easiest carnivorous plants that you can get for a beginner or anyone who might be interested to know. Mm. There are some other plants, of course, that I'm not going to mention in the list. These are the plants that I have in my collection, which I can show you guys. But there are tons of other ones as well. So this isn't the definitive list, but it, this is really a really good list for most of the people who might be wanting to start off and get something easy to grow in the hobby. How big do these get? <laughs> this one? Yeah. Drosera bonata. Yeah. Um, well, you can get the extreme version, like bonata multifidia or extrema. And 
I think I've read that they can get about a meter in size. Jeez. But that's that's from like one leaf, like one leaf to the other leaf. Oh, okay. Like a meter across. Mm. But yeah, they're getting massive. And they're native to Australia. The ones in, that Ooh. I saw in the wild, they're about 30, 30 centimeters. Nice. They're just huge. Wow, okay. Yeah, they get really, really big. Um, yeah, so Bonata gets bigger than Capensis do. That's another thing. If you want like a really big one, Mm-hmm. Um, but it is quite messy, like the leaves hang over and every, everything, so <laughs> it's up to you. <laughs> Next up, we have our Drosera Alicia. This isn't actually an, an Alicia, I think this is a Venusta, but you know, it's close enough just for the video. Drosera Alicia is very, very easy to grow, and that goes for Drosera spatulata also, Drosera toucansis. Um, quite a few of the small Rosetta species are super, super easy to care for. Uh, but the only reason why they come in at number three is because I find that if you aren't on top of their care, if you don't give them the right soil and the right size pot and the right size water, that they can actually start rotting away simply because they are closer to the ground. They have, you know, less airflow through them. They have higher humidity, so they can actually start rotting away and get mold in them. And they can also be overcome by moss. So that's another problem that happens with the small rosette species. But other than that, these plants, once again, super easy to care for. They just need full sun outside and basically almost any water. Distilled water, reverse osmosis water or rainwater, those waters are perfect for these plants. So give them that and these plants, I've been using Gold Coast tap water for two years. They're still alive. So yeah, Hmm. they do just just fine in the tap water here in Australia. But can you overwater these? Um... You can, and uh, if, if the water level is always too high oh. with the plants, they don't get any oxygen to the roots, mm-hmm. so then they rot away. So that's why you must let the water level um, fluctuate. So mm-hmm. you let the water level get down to nothing, and you fill it back up, and then you let it get to nothing, and then you fill it back up again. Mm-hmm. And that, but that's what happens with these small ones, is that they don't get enough air into their roots and stuff, and then they actually rot away. Mm. Like all of those spatulatas that we have in that you've seen yeah they're all rotting away mm. because the, the water level and the soil and they all started off really badly because i sprayed them with a neem oil mm. so they all they were doomed from then onwards but yeah at number four i come in with our drosera i mean our saracenia so this is just a saracenia citicina parrot pitcher plant i don't like them but we have one in the collection and they're, they're super easy to care for. Once again, they just need full sunlight. Uh, and these guys prefer a bit better water. You can't really get away too much with, um, you know, tap water, rubbish water like that. They are a little bit more sensitive than some of these hard growing drosera that, that I just spoke about. And they, once again, need a full sunlight, good water, and they need a little bit of a bigger pot. So this one is currently in a tiny little pot because I've crammed it in there because it's easier to sell off plants when they're in smaller pots. It's, it's cheaper for the buyers. That's why I do that. But they do need more soil, bigger pots, and they take up more space. And these guys also go dormant in winter. So that's another thing. They have winter care. And during winter, you must ensure that they don't rot away, they don't get moldy, all of that stuff. It's very easy to care for and look after them if you, of course, take the right steps and learn how to grow them. So if you aren't subscribed to the channel, I do so that it's, well, I do suggest that you subscribe to the channel now because I talk about all of these coniferous plants care and if you haven't grown a Saracenia before and you want to know about their winter dormancy, make sure that you let me know in the comments and I can make a video about that. So just make sure that you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any of those videos and let me know what you want to see. So yeah, these guys come in at number four because they have a little bit more care in winter time, slightly a little bit more. It's actually very easy. Me personally, I just water them less and let nature do the rest of the work. They get, it gets cold, it becomes less light, they go to sleep. And in springtime, they send out a flower, they'll flower and then they start growing again. Mm. But if it is too hot and humid, I find that with these plants that have very crowded crowns, they can get mildew, they can start rotting away, they can get some pests in them. So that's why they're a little bit more tricky, but still nonetheless a very easy growing plant. Most Saracenias, almost all of them, very easy to grow if you can give them direct light outside the correct water the right soil a big enough pot and it gets cold enough in winter so coming up at number five we have the venus flytrap now i've sold all of my venus flytraps as you guys may know it's tiny yeah i'm leaving 
Australia and we are moving to England and then we're going to travel Europe and see if we like any specific country in Europe and we will end up settling there or maybe if we are, are lucky enough we can get into America which is where we do really want to go Yeehaw. but yeah we're leaving Australia and I'm selling all my plants so that's why I'm all out of Venus flower traps for now I actually bought a whole bunch more to sell to people because people really love them so I've got a whole bunch more coming in hopefully they come in sooner rather than later and we can pot them all up together but yeah like I said these guys come in in fifth uh, they are super easy to care for in my opinion because all they need is once again enough sunlight good water good soil however for some people they do struggle with them they give them the wrong water and that can cause them to die they don't give them enough sunlight if they if you can't provide any of these plants I've mentioned with direct sun outside you can grow them on the windowsill except for really the Saracenia and the Venus flytrap because they like a lot of sunlight. So they really need good sunlight to do well and to color up very nicely as well. Another thing with the Venus flytrap is that if they flower, it can kill the plant if the plant is unhealthy, which is why I always suggest that you cut off the flower stalk and you can take the flower stalk and push it down into the soil and you have like a 50-50 chance that you can get a new plant coming out of that uh, flower stalk. They also require a winter dormancy, so when winter time comes around, they will go dormant, they will go to sleep, and once again, you have to watch out for their winter care. You don't want them to rot away, so ensure that you don't give them too much water. Uh, let the water tray dry out for like a one to two days, and then fill it back up so that they stay moist and damp, not wet, because they will rot away. It happens a lot, it's happened to me. It, I've lost more of these flat traps due to root rot than I have with the Drosera capensis. So you just have to ensure that you do watch that. Other than that, once again, very easy to care for. You just need lots of light, good water, good soil. And if you can put them outside where it gets cold in winter and warm in the summers and it doesn't get below freezing, they're very easy to care for. You just leave them outside. I do recommend any of these five to a beginner. The things that I've said about them is not to discourage you, but just to educate you so you know what you're up against. Those things that you will experience when growing these plants are very actually easy to deal with. For example, if a Venus flytrap is flowering, just cut it off. Mm. <laughs> that's, it's that simple. Do you have any questions? Mm, not really. really. <laughs> <laughs> no. The only thing is like, why are these kind of burnt, I guess? Yeah, so here in Australia, where we are specifically, our house, we had, what was it, two or three days of just like hot. Mm. It just became, it was rainy and humid, and then it was three days of just really hot and dry. And then that has caused these plants to dry out like mm. this. So all of their tips, they're all kind of cold, they're all burnt a little bit, then they're all dry. It's not sticky either. Not yeah, sticky it's not either. sticky because it got dry and it mm. got humid again. So um that's not good for them but that's the thing about these plants they're very resilient to that stuff so yeah. they won't die they'll just look bad until they get used to it mm. so even if you have a dry climate or a humid climate they get used to it so if it's very dry give them a bit of time they get used to it if it's very humid give them a bit of time they get used to it and they grow again mm. all of these species right here but if you got yourself like something like a nepenthes or a um helium fora or some of the more difficult types of sundews like Drosera prolifera or Drosera andromeda, I think that's what it's called, or even Magnifica, for example, like some of the difficult sundews to grow, you'll need a, you'll really need a greenhouse for them because they won't do well with that that fluctuation. Even Drosera hilaris, which I have like one plant of, I don't know how it survives summer, but it's dying again because it's summer again. Um, it hates the fluctuations of heat and cold. So mm -hmm. that one, it doesn't like it, but these ones can handle a wide variety, which is why I recommend them. But yeah, that answers your question as to why they're all burnt up and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so um, if you are in Australia and you want some plants, I am selling them. Like I said, I'm leaving the country. They're all $10. Every single plant is $10. Yep. So message me, uh, Instagram or Facebook or email, and I can, uh, send you a list of some of the plants we have or if you have any specific plants you want let me know and I can hopefully send them off to you or you can come pick them up either way but yeah that should be it do you have any more questions?
You have good questions. Me? Yeah. I don't. I don't. You've had three really good questions. Really? Yeah. Okay, guys. Well, that's all of the questions that Karen has. And <laughs> for now, I don't know. Don't say that. <laughs> Uh, these are the top five easiest plants to look after that I have in my collection, which I can show you guys. There are other ones, but most people will agree that these are very easy, simple plants to care for. And if you guys have any questions, please let me know. I'm happy to help. Other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please, if you've watched up until this point of the video, remember to subscribe. Please like the video. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. Ciao for now. <laughs> <laughs>